Good morning once again. This is Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. I'm going to be drinking coffee because I'm still only on my second cup and it takes that many to get me going. I do love coffee. I'm trying to limit my intake though. I drink too much of it probably. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about the Bible. We're going to be in John 10. Um, very interesting uh, passage of scripture. Jesus speaking here, and uh, there's not much to add when you when you when you look at Jesus and his teaching and his preaching. But I will say that I'm going to title this episode "Your Best Life Today," and you can have your best life today. And I'm going to I'm going to show you how it's done. But first, we're going to talk about shepherds because he, he, Jesus is going to reference. Uh, the Good Shepherd. This is where we get that uh, passage of Scripture, and he's going he's gonna to reference uh, this against false shepherds. There's going to be a contrast here. So, uh, just doing some research, just thinking and thinking about the shepherd uh, of biblical times, um, and I didn't know this, but Ro- I guess Rome, Rome in the Roman day, fortunes were were uh, laid up in in flocks. Wool was like wealth. Wool. wool wool back in that day was like money so uh ha- 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 those flocks of sheep were, were really important to uh commerce uh uh you know for the wool so and shepherds as they were thought of as pretty lowly people and sometimes sinners and and you know david was considered well no david was a shepherd uh but um they were they were down there at the low the low heap of society you know like uh they used to have people that clean clean the dung up in the streets those kind of people you know and yes that's gross but they, hey that's somebody's gotta somebody's gotta do it sorry okay that's my canadian sorry by the way if you haven't if you haven't heard me say that sorry um i love canadian people so i'm really and, and i i I'm really not making fun of you, but uh, I love accents too, and I think it's interesting. Anyway, so let's get into it. The shepherds spend all their time with sheep, <laughs> herding them, and they, they take them to good uh, areas to forage. Uh, they keep an eye on them for uh, poisonous uh, plants, and they move them from shelter to shelter to food to shelter. They spend enormous amounts of time with sheep, sometimes staying, you know, laying with them. They stay, the, the shepherding, uh, was 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 difficult because uh, of weather conditions you know extreme heat extreme colds uh they're they're responsible the heat sh- shepherds are up all night long uh, they're trying to keep them from uh from uh predators constantly walking around wearing they wore camel hair and uh, i thought of john the baptist for some reason and they they stayed at work awake they had to stay awake most nights to keep uh because of predators, you know, uh, all they have is a simple head cloth, and uh, they usually ate, had to carry what they ate, or if they had a donkey, they could carry more provisions. But you know, they'd carry dates and all olive, olives. I guess they carry them in their pocket. I don't know. <laughs> you have some olives in your pocket. Bread, cheese. You know, uh, I stayed with the flock for days, uh, and you know, they'd have to watch out for uh, the predators: bears, lions, wolves. And leopards even lived in in wilderness areas. So shepherd shepherding happened outside of the city, uh, outside the wilderness, not in the farmland areas. So access to food was probably difficult. But uh, shepherds using a pen, oftentimes now they would lay across the opening of that pen, acting as a gate. I thought that was interesting to protect uh, the sheep from straying. Now we'll see that illustration in John. Uh, John 10. Shepherds uh, represent the leaders of God's people. Uh, and they watch for enemies uh, that tend to, and they tend to the sick, and they rescue lost or trapped sheep. So let's get into the Bible scripture here. John 10. I hope you're blessed today. Um, I don't know what just dropped, but something dropped. John 10. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does... Let's start this right. Most assuredly. Now, assuredly is without a doubt. Let's just get that word out of the way. Assuredly. You're going to have your best life today? What do you? Where are we going to get to that? We're going to get to that. I'm going to show you how to do that. This. Stick with me. I'm going to get you there. 
I don't know what's wrong with my eye. But <laughs> Most certainly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Remember I talked about wool being, uh, who would want a sheep, you know? You want to think about it, stealing a sheep? Yes, you would back in that day. And uh, so a, a thief wouldn't come through the door. He's going to come climbing over the fence and, uh, you know, snagging some sheep here. A thief, sheep, they sound the same, don't they? But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Because the shepherd's coming through the, the door. Or sometimes he has to be the door. Remember I said that. Remember that picture is what I'm saying in your mind. So, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Um, interesting fact there that uh, sheep really do know their name. They, a, a lot of times shepherds would assign each sheep a name and they also know the shepherd's voice now there's a YouTube video I might uh, I, I probably will put in the description so that you could check it out I mean it's it's it, it's the most interesting thing uh, these uh, shepherds modern day shepherds they, they they call out this uh, flock of sheep they're about oh maybe no more than 50 yards away and they uh, uh, they call they, 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 they call out to the sheep and uh, four of they I think there's four of them but uh, and uh, the last the, the sheep don't do not pay attention to, to any of the shepherds except for the last one I'll put that link on it it's such a such an awesome uh, an awesome thing to see and uh, especially in the light of this uh, scripture so so let's get to that and when he brings out his sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice I just spoke about that yet they will by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers Jesus used this illustration but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them see I just don't I don't understand that, but they don't understand. They just uh, because they're in the world and they just don't want. They don't want to hear this. Unbelievers can't understand. By the way, it takes the hand of the Holy Spirit to believe, and uh, uh, more than the hand. But I mean, I don't know why I said it that way. But you you have to you have to uh, you have to have the Holy Spirit to understand. Uh, the Bible is foolishness to those who are perishing. And who are those that are perishing? Uh, well, those are the people that don't believe in Jesus Christ. And so I want you to have that. I want your eyes to be open. We talked about that. And uh, this this J book of John is full of these kind of things. Your eyes will be open. You're, you're, you're walking in darkness. We've talked about walking in darkness. Um, you know, these, these uh, Pharisees were cruel. They were cruel. The Pharisees were the leaders of the day. They were the religious leaders. And this is what people were following. And they were cruel to this blind, the last, yesterday we talked about the blind, uh, the blind man receiving his sight. And the Pharisees were just brutal. They were cruel to him. They kicked him out of the synagogue. And then Jesus uh, comes and talks most assuredly. Without a doubt, I'd say to you that he does not enter the sheepfold. So, this contrast between a good shepherd and a bad shepherd. And uh, what does it have to do with our best life today? I'm going to show you. And <laughs> Jesus is the good shepherd. So Jesus said to them, most assuredly, once again, without a doubt, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. Now, remember the illustration. I said sometimes shepherds had to lay in front, lay down in front of the gate and act as a door so sheep wouldn't go out if they found some place you know maybe some rocks or something maybe they could get them in a pen and corral them up the sheep wander it's no wonder <laughs> that we are we are um, uh, compared to sheep we tend to wander sheep just wander around aimlessly you know uh, all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not hear them. So if you're in Christ today, praise the Lord because you're going to recognize 
the different voices. You know, I'm more concerned about those that are in Christ right now. That's my that's my heart. And uh, for you that are in Christ, I'm concerned for you too. I love you, and I'm not saying that, but I'm I'm saying that the sheep don't hear the voice of a stranger. You have to be God's child. You have to accept Jesus Christ to be considered a sheep because the Bible does talk about sheep and goats and goats being the total opposite of sheep. Sheep? Sheep. Sheep. I don't think there's an S on sheep. So <laughs> I never claimed to be an English scholar. Now, obviously, obviously if you watched my uh, uh, previous videos, you'll know I, it's not. Uh, I'm uh, not much me no have much education <laughs> so i'm at the door if anyone enters by me he will be saved here we go and we'll go in and find pasture uh what a beautiful picture of our lives in christ the thief does not come except to steal kill and destroy there's a picture of satan i have come that and I, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Your best life today is in Christ, y'all. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known by my own. As the Father known, knows me, even so, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring. And they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Beautiful pictures here. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I might gain it then I might take it again. No one takes it from me, but I have laid it down myself, and I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Uh, therefore there was division among the Jews because of these sayings, and many of them said, He has a demon. He's mad. Why do you listen to him? Others said, These are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Oh, we're getting smart out there. The, Jesus, uh, the shepherd knows his sheep. Now, it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked into the temple on Solomon's porch. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in debt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered him, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not. My sheep, as I said to you, my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. He's telling them who he is. He's telling them how to have an abundant life. He's telling them to have their best life now. Now, now, now. You want your best life now? Uh, Jesus is contrasting the good shepherd and the false shepherds. The shepherds, Israel. He's 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 looking at. Uh, he's he's telling them beware. Uh, beware of anybody who comes in. The, I think I'm gonna why I put that down. Anyways, <laughs> I digress. Oh boy, most assuredly I say to you the following: the great the great conflict with the religious leaders regarding their cruel uh, treatment of the blind man. I told you about that after receiving sight. We're going to suffer. I said that yesterday. Once we receive sight of the Lord, we probably will suffer in this world, in this world. That's the hard part about, about all this. We're talking about our best life today. Well, our best life today is, is, is not really today. And it's not now. It's to come in heaven. And that's the part we got to believe. That's hard because we live in a physical world here in our flesh. But this is, is only temporary, guys. It's temporary. A contrast between Jesus' heart and the works of the heart of many religious leaders of that day. Not everyone is a true shepherd. Uh, some are thieves and robbers. And this is a picture of, of Satan, you know. Uh, some leaders uh, gain their position through uh, who they know, not what they know. You know, they're, they're personal friends or they're the political status. Uh, the true shepherd comes by the door. 
The true shepherd is loving. He is he is not selfish. He's self-sacrificing. He takes direction from uh, uh, he takes direction from above. He's a personal interest. He has a personal interest in his flock. You're going to know a good pastor. Even he is relational. He's approachable. He guides. He he directs. He knows the sheep uh, by name, and the sheep respond to him by uh, by his voice. He is acquainted. Uh, he gives his life if needed. The shepherd protects life and the false shepherd takes life away. They're thieves and robbers. That's what they are. The, uh, a thief will use deception and trickery. A robber is violent and destructive. They take away life. Jesus has come to give life and give it abundantly. Satan de- is described and his tools of his, his religious leaders. He has pastors and leaders to you. You have to be careful out here. They're bogus shepherds. They're they're not real true leaders of Christ. But the sheep, the true sheep, they don't hear them. They know something's up. God's children do not find that voice attractive. You know, before Jesus Christ, you and I found Satan's voice very attractive. The voice of our flesh, the voice of the world, the things of the world. Your best life today is in Christ. It's not in monetary things. It's not in blessing. It's not in health. And yes, those things are great. Those things come from God. But, uh, you know, in Christ you'll find peace. In Christ is, is you'll find satisfaction. You'll find joy. You'll find joy forevermore. You'll find rest for your souls. You'll find rest. Uh, take take my, my burden on. Take my yoke for my uh, burden is light. And you'll find a place for your shame. See, we, we all live in shame. You know, as an unbeliever, I know that I was shameful. I was guilty all the time, every time I did things. Excuse me, I gotta have some coffee. You will find rest in Christ. And you want rest from that? You'll find forgiveness in Jesus Christ. You'll find an abundant life. It's just not... You'll find... Uh, it doesn't mean you're going to have a long life. It doesn't mean that you're going to have an easy, comfortable life. Well, Randy, that's not what I want. I want an easy, comfortable life. That sorry, <laughs> that doesn't happen here. Uh, here, we have eternity in paradise to come. Isn't that much more than this? You know, maybe we get eighty years here. You know, I'm fifty-eight. I'm not far away from that. So. I don't know how old you are. It doesn't really matter. But you could die at any time. But everybody dies. The wages of sin is death. An abundant life does not mean long, easy, comfortable living. But stamina. I, I wanted to read. Uh, I want to read Matthew seven. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many enter into it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you'll recognize them. And not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many on that day will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name, perform many miracles? Then I will tell them, Plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. Therefore, everyone who hears this word of mine, and listen, I'm, I'm telling you about Jesus' word. This ain't my words. It's Randy's. This is not Randy's gospel. This is Jesus' gospel. This is Jesus' words. Anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down. The streams rose. The winds blew and beat against that house. Yes, he, yet it did not fall because he had his foundation on the rock, but everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Listen, the winds blow, the rain comes, the wind. The, life isn't easy. Many of you out there are struggling. I know I have struggled. Many of you know this to be true. Many of you have 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 seen dark days having or being a Christian doesn't mean that you're going to have an easy life 
It means that you will have stamina, that you will have the ability, that you will have joy in these storms. You will have the energy. You will have the stamina. You will have the overflow. And you will honor God and you will come out with a foundation. You see the person that builds his house on the sand, they don't even have a foundation anymore. They have nowhere to go. How do people do it without the Lord Jesus Christ? How do people go through the, the worst of times without God in their life? How? How could they do it? My mother used to say that all the time. I don't know how somebody could not have God. Full of life and our bright and vehement, Spurgeon said, Christ laid down his life for you and I. A good leader would do the same. He'll display the characteristics of Jesus Christ. And as a good pastor, I know of some. I have a good friend, Pastor Bruce. I, I would put him. At, I, I, I think he's this kind of pastor. Oh, not opposing false doctrine. They're willing to put up with anything for the sake of peace and quiet. That's what Spurgeon said. Listen, build your house on Jesus Christ. You can have your best life today. Today could be your day. What do I mean by that? Salvation is the best for you. It's best for you that I tell you about this. It's not best for me. I don't get anything from this RV Bible study. I'm not asking you for any money. I'm not asking you for any. I don't. I don't get any. I'm not looking for recognition. I'm not that kind of person. Can care less. I'm telling you this because I believe we're in the Atlanta days, and I feel compelled. But your end day could be today, and your end day could 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 end in a car wreck. Uh, God forbid that happened to you, but it could, or a heart attack. Uh, or, or, or you could be diagnosed with cancer and have to go through horrible times. But Jesus Christ, you could have. And you could have eternal life. So when you pass from this life into the next life, you could pass knowing that God's forgiven your sin. And uh, you, have, you have security. Most assuredly, I tell you that you'll have it. I, without a doubt, Jesus is saying, without a doubt, uh, without a doubt you'll know the shepherd you'll hear his voice you'll follow after him he laid down his life and uh, for you and I and uh, so that we could have eternal life no 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 person will have eternal life uh, in Christ, in heaven without Christ so you'll have eternal life but it'll be actually what the Bible says eternal death eternal death or eternal life you can make that choice today Okay, so with that being said, how do how does somebody do that? Uh, if you don't know the Lord, this is a very uh, it's simple, but it's not simple because you got to get real and you got to get real with yourself and you got to say, okay, I I hear you, God, in my in my heart, and I hear I know that I'm a sinner, I know I'm guilty, I know I'm uh, I can't live right, and I haven't ever been able to live right. I'm a slave to sin. And so, God, I'm going to ask for forgiveness. I'm going to trust that what you say in your word is true. I'm going to ask you to reside inside of my heart and my life, that you'll be my Lord, that you'll give me your Holy Spirit. I turn away from my sin. I accept your forgiveness. You are the Lord. You died for me, and you rose again. And you're seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me, and that you love me. And that I want to obey and love you. And I want you to be my shepherd and my king and my Lord today. And if you do that, you will, you will, have, you will have eternity. You're guaranteed eternities. You're, you're right now, you become a child of God. You'll be able to hear his voice. You'll be able to understand this word. You'll be, understand, you'll be able to understand the Bible. And you will want to walk in righteousness and obedience with him. Listen, I'm Randy. I gotta go. 25 minutes seems to go fast. Uh, most, you know, I, I guess I love you, but the most important thing I want to say is Jesus Christ loves you to death. He gave your life. He gave his life for you and for me. And uh, please accept that. Okay.
Have a great day. I hope you guys learned something. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Lord willing. Bye.